is episode number 67 of Hebrews in Exile with our honorable teacher, Robert B. Holman Jr. and Sean Appleton. And we continue our discussion about the mitzvot in part two of this ongoing series. We encourage you to sit back, relax, and take notes as we go over the applicable mitzvot that affect us here today as we are in exile. Hebrews in exile, you know what we do. Let's go! This is Rabbi Robert B. Holman Jr. and Sean Appleton, and this is Hebrews Hebrews in Exile. Exile. You know, in our podcast, number 66, that played the title being the prophet amongst us, I I made a statement Mm -hmm. um, regarding the fact that the Ashkenazi Jews... um, don't know the mitzvahs of the Most High. Okay. And I misstated. All right. The Ashkenazi Jews, as we talk about the mitzvahs as, as we move forward, and, and, I, and I need, I need, I need, I need for you, for people to, to understand something. The Ashkenazi Jews are the body of people that came up with the mystical number of 613 mitzvot, mm-hmm. for which none of the rabbis agree with. Right. So the rabbis know the mitzvot. Mm-hmm. Um, the question is, do they teach the mitzvot? That's, that, that should have been the proper okay. uh, f- thought. I have been to the um, um, synagogues. I used to go to the synagogues every Friday because we didn't have anything going on back in the day. And I used to go to the synagogue and listen to the rabbis to listen to the rabbis teach. Okay. None of them teach the mitzvot that right. I heard. Right. And I still like what you said last time was they teach the parashahs, right? Yeah. Okay. And I listened to the various messianic teachers Mm -hmm. of which there are a lot of them and Mm -hmm. they all kind of stick together birds of a feather flock together (laughs) none of them teach the mitzvot Mm. you remember when we had the conference in 2008 Right at the Red Lion. At right? the Red Lion. Yeah, used to be Red Lion. Yeah, yeah we had the conference, a messianic uh, Hebrew Roots conference, and we had uh, Brad Scott, Bill Cloud. Yeah, uh, I remember that. S- Simon Altoff. Mm-hmm. And as I recall, of which I have all of those recordings, mm-hmm. nothing that they shared with us over those three days that cost us about $15,000 to pull off. Mm. None of these individuals spoke anything at all about the central theme of the Most High, the mitzvot. Yeah. Now, now, Now that you think about it, yeah. They didn't. I have had Monty Judah in our congregation he spoke. He has he has been to First Tab, and he has spoken to our congregation, and I have those recordings. Mm-hmm. And same thing. And nothing in those recordings say anything about misfos. Huh? Imagine that. I have had um, what's his name? Um, hmm. T.D. Jakes? No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Come on. What's his name? I can't think of it right now. <laughs> One of the other more prominent Messianic teachers who wrote the uh, seven, the seven, uh, fest- wrote the book, The Seven Festivals. Oh, yeah. I know who you're talking about. Um, I see his face. Yeah, the I can see it. Green. Yeah, I can uh, see it. I, and I know him so well. He's a friend of mine. But 
That wasn't Brad Scott, was no, it? No, 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 was, no, um, no, no, no. I know what you're talking about, though. Yeah. Anyway, nothing in his dissertation with us, and I've had him at least. Eddie Chumney. Eddie Chumney, right. There I've, you had go. Eddie, I've had Eddie with me, and he's spoken to us several times in our congregation, and nothing that Eddie presented to us spoke about the teachings of the misvotes. Right. Right. So, so I get to my point. The, the value of understanding something that's so important that the Most High says in his word over and over and over and over again, obey, 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 obey these words I'm giving to you. Obey, obey my misvotes and my, my commandments. Obey them. They're not being taught in any constructive sense where people can understand the misfos beyond the norm. Mm. And I, I've talked about the norm before, the norm being the Sabbath, keep the Sabbath, uh, the more deems, the dietary laws. Right. Right. Those, those are the, those are, those are the three mm -hmm. primary, uh, constructive misfos that everybody knows and then there's then there are those that believe that you're not supposed to buy and sell on the Sabbath but that's not a misfos that's over in the book of Nehemiah uh, and uh, it that does not come up in the Torah in the Torah of Moshe, uh, yeah. of Moshe. Mm -hmm. and the Most High said to do something what he said remember the Torah of Moshe oh, that's right so when it comes to the idea of being able to meditate upon something, we've said this before, mm -hmm. okay? You can't meditate upon something that you don't know. Right. Right. Or something that hasn't been presented to you. Right. Exactly. I'm not going to sit up here and meditate. And the interesting yeah. thing about King David uh -huh. is that King David says, I meditate up on your statutes, your mitzvot. I meditate upon them day and night. So the king, the king did something that Torah, that's a Torah commandment. Every king shall write his own Torah. Torah. Mm -hmm. He didn't say write the history of Israel. He said, write the Torah. We know what the Torah is mm -hmm. because uh, Devarim chapter 4, Mashe speaks to Hebrew Israel on his way out and tells them what Torah is. Right. But what Torah is, is not being taught right. anywhere that I know of. Mm -hmm. I have on my shelf at home, I have a compendium of writings by, oh, I forget the gentleman's name now, but the writings contain what he has pulled out that defines the 613 Mitz mitzvot okay. that, that the rabbis say exists. When I take his list and map them against Two other rabbis list, all three of them disagree on what 613 are. One might have something, one might have something missing. So the question comes back to me, what difference does it make what the number is? The number is not important. And right. there is nowhere in scripture where the Most High said, oh, I'm giving you 613 misfos. Right. He never enumerates them. He never enumerates them. No. All he says is to obey them. Correct. Right. So what we have to do, we have to go into our history book and we have to go into our textbook. And as we read through, we have to pull out mm -hmm. and set them aside as we as we walk through them to know what what they are. Right. Which I which I've done. And I'm not going to I'm not going to talk about a number. OK. We're just going to talk about what they are. Excellent. Thanks. And and, uh, you know, and, and as I talk to you all about what they are. Uh, uh, I'm only going to deal with the ones that are germane to our being able to carry out and fulfill in this exile. Excellent. Now, I need to do a sidetrack. Before I go there tonight, you know, I always got something, something else. <laughs> 
I listen to a I listen to some black intellectuals. Ah. Uh, some the, Hebrew Israelites who don't know that they're Hebrew talk about black thought in the hour of chaos. Yes, I'm intrigued. Edge of my seat. And as I listen to these intellectuals, now intellectuals are individuals who have done an awful lot of study and an awful lot of reading, and they can quote to you out of the substantive matters of books that they've read, what the authors have said, blah, 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 blah. Showing their mental prowess. Now, what they can't quote out of the most important book in the world, mm -hmm. on the planet, in the universe of time, is what the Most High has spoken to Hebrew Israel. Can't quote that. And testify. They testify. Well, you know, I'm a Christian. I go, what? <laughs> what? Wait a minute. You are a doc. You have a doctorate in black studies. You're teaching. You're teaching theology at, at Princeton. And you don't know that that thing that you keep being so proud and sticking your chest out about is not your document and Jesus Christ is not your God or Lord. He is the God and the Lord of the Greeks. Now, you just proved why we're here. Because intellectuals like that, because we will say the same thing about that one podcast we just did not too long ago. We brought up that word that starts with a T. What is it? Tangible. People are not associating the tangibility of the Most High while we got kicked out of the land with the fact that we've abandoned what you're getting ready to talk about, which is the mitzvot. It's not that they're not smart enough to understand it. They haven't had teachers and leaders put in front of them that says this is the correct teaching in proper context that says the reason why we're getting our butts kicked is because we've abandoned the misfold. That is missing from our teaching from our people. So same here, I'm drawing the same parallel. They say these individuals that are intellectuals that stick their chests out about being Christian. Oh yeah, proud of it are under tutelage and people that are telling them are not associating what they need to be associated with in its correct context. I'm going, I'm thinking in my mind, I'm going. Not even telling them that they're Hebrew. I'm thinking, how can you be a professor of black history ascribed to a Eurocentric idea and theology uh, from the people that are kicking your black behind and have been enslaved you over, over, over a plethora of years and 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 you're and you're proud of listen and, and then and then you want to quote Marcus Garvey <laughs> and I'm going what the heck did you not hear Marcus Garvey say a oh, people would out a, knowledge a people without the knowledge of their past history, origin, and culture is like a tree without, without roots. roots. See, no one is teaching. See, that's what I'm saying. It establishes why we're here. Because we're trying to get people back to the No, 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 a people without the knowledge of their past history, origin, origin and culture, origin and culture. Our origin culture did not begin at Plymouth Rock. That's right. That's right. He also quoted and said, if we as a people realize the greatness from which we came, we would be less likely to disrespect ourselves. Another mic drop. That's that's Garvey. That's Garvey. You know, 
I, I, I'm, I'm gonna get to them. I'm not. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm only 14 minutes in, so I got some time. All right. <laughs> if you read Garvey from Garvey's heartfelt perspective, Garvey is way on the other side of Plymouth Rock to make that statement. He's way on the other side of Plymouth Rock. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. But these intellectuals using words that the normal Hebrew and exile ain't got a clue what they talking about. Mm hmm. Because, I mean, after all, they're intellectuals and everybody else is like, well, you're just you're just not as smart as I am. Yeah, they have no sense of de and, deprecation at all. Let me say something. I'm going to get to the misfold. And the noise, I call it noise. It's like I might as well I might as well go to I might as go well go to the Christian church and get my motivational speak speech on and get my oh ooh, he ooh ooh he ooh he preached so good oh my goodness what did he preach about I don't know it sure but it was it sure was good it sure was good he it, sure, on his show. It, it sure sounded good so we got things that sound good. But have no substance when it um, <laughs> when it comes to the soul of the man of melanation who is in exile, getting his behind whooped every day of the week. Every day of the week, and you can see that. And on as news. of and as of this podcast today. Mm -hmm. On Sunday or Saturday, you got a white national driving from somewhere, not even in a place, driving from his home to Buffalo, New York, going into a black store and shooting black folks. Mm. And you going to tell me that it's not tangible? That's tangibility all day long right there. And how are intellectual? Well, we need, we need to, we... <laughs> See, this is cold blooded because we understand we are going to stay in this circle. You cannot intellectualize the Most High when He has said what's going to happen. That's right. You can't intellectualize that. Right. You can't. You can't legislate that. You can't change that. If He said these things are going to happen to you, and I'm going to go back to the same text, Devarim chapter twenty-eight, start at verse fifteen to sixty-nine, and that's not the only place. Right. Let's get on with the miss, folks. <laughs> <laughs> Woo. <sighs> See, this is exciting because, you know, th we're getting ready to delve into territory. And I know you want to get there, but I'm riding off of that, what they call a wake. After the, after the boat has gone by and you're just kind of riding the wave that's coming, coming along after it. It's, it's beautiful okay. because when you understand the structure and the hierarchy of the Most High, this is quintessential. Do you understand? I hope people understand what, what, what is happening here. The Most High has imparted his word into text and has given it to the greatest prophet that we have ever known, Moshe. But do you know what is above Moshe? It's the mitzvot because Moshe is bound by those mitzvot. No one person is above them. And we're teaching the essence or trying to get into the essence of the heart of the Most High. This is where, there's a text that says that where a man's heart is, there is tre where a man's treasure is, there is his heart also, okay? And this is where the Most High's heart is, to get us back into right standing with him through this medium. And people are not, and, and hopefully that resonates with people, to say you're at a point now where the, the weeds have been pulled, you're a flower that's been planted in this garden. The weeds have grown around you. You've pulled the weeds, and now we're getting ready to fertilize this ground with some rich topsoil so the things that the Most High has inside for you can grow. 
I apologize to you because I know you wanted to get No, 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 you can keep on talking because I'm, try, I'm trying to find something. It is such a beautiful thing to be able to to realize it. And I'm going to I am so excited because as I'm doing my studies, I'm I'm coming out of the book of Yahashua and I'm getting ready to make the transition into the judges, which you call your roller coaster book. I call it my my uh, my uh, 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 recidivism book, my the uh, 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 the relapse book, because all these children of Israel do is they get into the land, they jack up, they fall away from the Most High. The Most High gives them a savior, which is called a Messiah, to bring them back into right standing. And they teach this in order to get them back. Yes, they teach Torah. They do. They teach Torah to get them back. The judge's job is to say, Israel, you are falling away from what? This. This. The misfolks. And the only way we're going to get back in right standing and earn our position back and in our inheritance that was promised to our father, Avraham, upon which I've noted before, you don't have to believe in some man to get the inheritance that the Most High has given you. All you have to do is acquiesce to the Most High's teaching. Well, you better preach. So therefore, at the end of the day, it's very simple. Follow the mitzvot and obey them. This right here. <laughs> listen, listen, listen. I said I was not going to go to I said I was not going to go to what Jeremiah tonight. But I have to go there. All right. I gotta go there. Let's do it. We're here. As before I get to all right, I'm 21 minutes in. All right. Jeremiah chapter 6, verse 5, 16. Okay. Now, I want to preface this by saying that in order for the New Testament or that book over there to have validity, mm-hmm. it would have to have these words in it. Here is what Yahweh, Yahweh says. says. Those words are not over there. Right. Stand at the crossroads and look and ask about the ancient past. I mentioned this, I mentioned this in podcast 66. Mm-hmm. Ask about the ancient paths. Now you have to ask a question. What is he talking about? Right. What are the ancient, ancient paths? Okay. Which one is the good way? Take it. And you will find rest for your souls. Mm-hmm. But they said, will not take it. Now let's go back. Okay. Ask about the ancient past. What are the ancient paths? Mm. And what's the good way? Right, 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 right. These mitzvot, this, the Torah, the Torah, he says, is good. Mm. The Torah is perfect. That's right. The Torah will, will make you happy. Mm-hmm. The Torah happens to be the ancient paths. That's right. That's right. Don't, listen, don't, <laughs> don't, don't go out there looking for, I'm searching for the ancient. Let's, let us all go back to the old landmark. What landmark? I'm not wanting to go back to, to stuff that's been regurgitated out of Eurocentric thought when the Elohim of Abraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov uh-huh. who happened to be who happened to have been melanated men and Moshe was the greatest prophet at all who oh. happened to be a melanated man he spoke and said and Yahweh said Shit. that's right and when he gets through speaking what Yahweh says and Yahweh says something Yahweh co-signs it I am I am Yahweh I said this Boom. That ain't that ain't across the street. Right. That's not in that book across the street. You'll never hear him say, like you said, never hear him say, Moshe said, or I'm saying, boom. I'm always speaking about, I'm the ambassador for the most high. Yes. Now, I got one more, and then I'm going to get on with it. Gotcha. All right. Jeremiah chapter 9, mm-hmm. verse 22. Mm-hmm. Once again. Here is what Yahweh Yahweh says. 
The wise man should not boast about his wisdom. <laughs> the powerful should not boast about his power. The wealthy should not boast about his wealth. Instead, let the boaster boast about this, that he understands and knows me, that I am Yahweh practicing grace, justice, righteousness in the land. For in these things I take pleasure, says Yahweh. Yep. So if there's going to be any boasting and any chest sticking out, <laughs> I'm a Christian. Right, right. You know, well, and you're wise. Right. Supposed to, supposed to be exuding wisdom. Well, if you don't understand and know the most high, then you're not a wise person. That's right. You're wise in the ways of the knowledge of this world, but you're not wise in the things of the Elohim. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And while you professing, I got to get <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get you a lavalier mic so you can walk around. <laughs> While you're professing to be so enamored with Christianity, you don't know the Elohim of Abraham, Nitzchak, and Ma, and and and, and Yaakov, Yaakov mm -hmm. and his people, and you're trying to speak for them. Right. Let's get on with it. All right. Let's get on with it. Let me get. Let me get. Um, first mitzvahs we're going to get to tonight happens to be. In Bereshit, which is Genesis chapter 23 and verse number 33. Excellent. All right. Let me see here. Let me see here. Where, where, where is it? Where? There we go. There we go. And it says these words. Yeah, the prohibition happens to be the idea of the prohibition is not to eat sinew. Now, what is sinew? Well, sinew is the thigh muscle. Mm -hmm. That that passes along the hip socket. So let's read it. Yaakov called the place in Peniel face of Yah, because I have seen Yah's face to face. Yet my life was spared. The sun rose up on him. He went on past Peniel, limping at the hip. Mm -hmm. Now, now. We, I've heard messages talk about this, you know, about how Yaakov went in one way and man, he, he came out, he came out a different way. Well, yeah, well, heck yeah, he came out a different way. Right. He got his hip messed up. That's literally. Right. Exactly. Literally. Mm -hmm. The text goes on to say, this is why to this day, the people of Israel do not eat the thigh muscle that passes along the hip socket because the man struck Yahweh's Yaakov's hip at the socket. What's the underlying purpose of this particular of this particular mitzvah? Well, it is meant to be a reminder that as Yaakov suffered at the hand of his brother Esau, and that in exile, we Israel are suffering many troubles in our various exiles at the hands of the nations. Mm -hmm. This mark of the nations is going to be upon us. However, just as the sun set upon our father Yaakov and he was healed, so too the son of redemption will one day set upon us and we too will be healed and see our salvation. Mm. Now, what's the application? The application is we are supposed to remove the sinew, and if we were koshering our own meat, then we would dig after it and remove it, and a piece of meat that we eat, sinew, is not to be eaten. Okay. So we don't so we don't we don't eat we don't we don't chew on that thing oh, right. because it's a reminder for Israel right. about what our about what our father went through. That's right. Next one. I love it. This is not spiritualized. No. <laughs> this is context. Yeah. Shemot chapter 21 verse 15. The prohibition to strike one's father or mother. No. Oh. So this is one of them misfolds that's written now, on you already. Now we we got you know I read I read in the pay I read in the news today that this young man got over got into an argument with his father 
about going to bed. On the news? Yeah. Man. Okay. Yeah. He didn't hit him. He didn't hit him? No. Okay. He shot him. Over going to bed? I read in an article of news where a young lady got in a dispute mm. with her mother and she stabbed her mother to death. Okay. Now, I don't know. I don't know what nationality these individuals were, but I'm just putting it into context with mm. the misfit because I know that amongst our Hebrew people, we got children that don't have any discipline because they are not, they're not aware of the harm and they're not aware of the teaching that the Most High says that you and I are supposed to honor our mothers and fathers. Right. Ain't putting any condition like right? honor your mother and father. Exactly. He didn't say whether they were good, bad, ugly, or what. He said, honor your mother and father. This mitzvah says, whoever sh sh attacks his father or mother must be put to death. So if we were in the land, in the Messianic era, right. and this happened, uh, you're behind, we'd, we'd be digging a hole. Exactly. <laughs> You'd be going to get you some choice rocks. <laughs> <laughs> You'd be getting that arm loosened up. Yeah, right. <laughs> you remember? You remember the wild, wild, the wild, wild west movies when they were going to hang somebody? Oh yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. <clears throat> they put the gallows out in the street, and then about time they get all the, the whole community, <laughs> the whole community comes out to see the hanging. <clears throat> in the most high, <laughs> we're laughing about this, but this really isn't funny. In the most highs, in the most highs, um, uh, verbiage of putting someone to death for the violation of this means you dig a hole, the whole community of Israel, children, grandma, old folks go get <laughs> stones and rocks. Right. They put you behind down in this hole, which are up to your shoulders, and you get, you stones. get stoned with stones thrown at you until you're dead. You get bludgeoned to death. By that if, whole community. If we, this is what Israel went through before, before they got excommunicated out of the land. land. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if we were in the land today, this is something. But the point that I'm trying to make here, though, we're, we're not going to stone him by nobody's going to die, is that the Most High is takes. He's very offended that whoever curses his father or mother must be put to death. In other words, this misfold frowns on the idea of us Hebrews in exile treating our mothers and fathers as though they were nothing. Right. 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 Hmm. The enforcement of justice is necessary for the proper functioning of a civilized society. Mm -hmm. The hitting of one's parents undermines the very structure of a home, which is supposed to be the primary building block of the of, of society as a whole. So now, if the home is disrupted, now now watch it, now watch it, watch, 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 watch. Mm -hmm. Eurocentrics told us, and Hebrews told us that what I'm reading here to you is oh antiquated and did not bring us to the goal. Ineffective. And it's ineffective. <gasps> Let me ask you a question. I'm not talking <laughs> here about something that's outside the parameter of morality. Right. I'm not talking about something that is outside the parameter that it's naive even in your mouth well, to do. Right. This particular misfold is a misfold that is common to the norm of society. Exactly. That's written on you. You come out factory stamped with that one. I mean, it's 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 society, right? You just but ultimately know it. <laughs> but it's old, antiquated, and ineffective. Right. This is old, antiquated, and ineffective. Really, can't be, can't be, not in the slightest. <sighs> Next one. So, what fish one we got here? All right. 
Shemot chapter 21, verses 18 to 19 <clears throat> is a mitzvot that deals with compensation for injuring one's fellow man. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> now, as I read this, remember and keep in mind that Hebrew said that it's these are carnal commands. They are ineffective and they do not bring us to the goal. To the goal. And the right. Greeks said that they've been done away with and you've been taught in your churches that these misfos are for another people. Right. The Jews. Mm. Watch this. If two people fight and one hits the other with a stone or with his fist and the injured party doesn't die but is confined to his bed, then if he receives enough, rec excuse me, recovers enough to be able to walk around outside, even with a cane, the attacker will be free of liability, hmm. except to compensate him for his loss of time and take responsibility for his care until his recovery is complete. It's a matter of justice now. Let's look at our civil law. Because I was getting ready to say, that sounds awfully familiar. Awfully familiar. You're behind. In this America, can be thrown in jail for assault and battery. That's true. Happens every day. And if the injured party happens to incur loss, you and I or the person causing the harm will be subject to civil suit. It's correct. For what? For what? Oh! <laughs> Compensation for his loss of time and taking responsibility for his care until his recovery is complete. You're going to pay for my Ex hospital bill. Except, mm -hmm. except if we go to civil court and I sue you for the loss, I'm suing you for more than just my recovery. Just the recovery, yeah. Pain and suffering. That's right. That's and inconvenience. Called. Right. Uh, I missed work. I had loss of income. I had all kind of stuff. Appleton. Yes, sir. How come that's a misvote? <laughs> But it's been done away with. <laughs> and it it was ineffective and does not bring us to the girl. That's what the book of Hebrews, chapter 5, chapter 7 says. <sighs> I'm having fun. <laughs> I see. I'm having fun. I see. Shemot, chapter 22, verses 6 and 7. The law of entrusted money. <laughs> Yet another one. Ooh, <laughs> if a person entrusts a neighbor with money or goods and they are stolen from the trustee's house, then if the thief is found, he must pay double. But if the thief is not found, then the trustee must state before Yahweh that he did not take the person's goods himself. Okay. All right. I'm with you. Now. If I entrust you, oh, I'm going to flip it, all right. Sorry. <laughs> if I entrust you with goods and money to save from me, and it gets stolen from your house, okay? Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm not going to be that kind. That's right. You gonna come after me and say, okay, I, "I know it was and, stolen," and and I don't care if I don't care if the thief gets found or not. I'm gonna hold you responsible responsible for not safeguarding the goods that I gave you. How come that's a Torah a Torah misvote mm. that ineffective, right? And did not bring us to the goal. Henceforth, there must be needs for another Torah. Can I say something? Say it. I, I need to say this. Say it. Because it just it just hit me. Not that it ha we haven't said this before, but in staying in with the same vein as this, this is what I thought about when you were saying this. My mind was drawn back to this. Your body 
my body, everybody's body was created by the Most High. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. We are just a house. Your soul, your spirit lives in this house called the body. Yeah. This body is not yours. No. The Most High lent this to you for a period of time. And he expects that you take what? Care of it. Yes. While it's on loan. Yes. For you. Yes. So by the time that the Most High decides to get it back, it better be in the condition that he expects it to be back in. Not for you to go ahead and destroy it and do whatever you need to do to it. I'm just only drawing the parallel to say that that Vitz folk just reminded me of that, just the beauty of the fact that how the Most High has designed these Torah mitzvot that we haven't got to, so we're able to take care of our bodies. That no. we're able to make sure that we are in line. He's given us things within the confines of text. Now, now, do you think these things ought to be taught? <laughs> yes. It gives meaning and gravitas to life. Oh, okay. Okay. Um. Ooh. Shemot chapter 22, verse 18 and 19. All right. The prohibition against beastology. Moral. <laughs> Whoever has sexual relationships with an animal must be put to death. In this exile, we ain't supposed to be having sex with, 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 with sheep. Right. That's correct. That's correct. You're not. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can't go Man, there. Listen, I can't. I can't we, go we there. We gotta have a rated R podcast. I, one I, of these times. I, I can't. I can't. I can't. I can't go Y'all there. Y'all go ahead and usher the kids in the other room. I can't go there. Come on. <laughs> Anyone who sacrifices to to any god other than Yahweh alone is to be completely destroyed. What's the underlying purpose? <laughs> to rid wickedness from Israel, but but can only be enforced in the land with ordained judges. However, uh, eighteen and nineteen, bestiology is something that we don't do even in exile. It's moral. That's it right. speaks to morality. That's right. So does, does one say because that those mitzvot have been done away that now that the Christian church is condoning that? Well, it's been done away with. You don't have to worry about that no more. You can do that. They, they, they must be condoning it. They must be because if we're going away with stuff like this. Oh, boy. <laughs> I'm sorry. Now. Now, in the next one, Shemot chapter 22, and verses 20, the prohibition to oppress a foreigner. You must neither wrong nor oppress a foreigner living among you, for you yourselves were foreigners in the land of Mitzrayim or Egypt. Mm -hmm. A foreigner is in Hebrew is called a ger. Mm -hmm. It's a person from the nations who converts and joins the Hebrew nation by way of faith. Vayikra, Leviticus chapter 19, verses 33. If a foreigner stays with you in your land, do not do him wrong. Now, I know that it's very difficult because we happen to be in exile. Right. And we are exiled amongst the foreigners and the nations. Mm -hmm. And it's very hard for us not to want to oppress the foreigner who is oppressing us. Right. But this text, this text is not talking about the oppressor who's oppressing you. Mm. It's talking about you, you being you. kind to the foreigner who is being good to you. Right. Exactly. So we don't go around like, um, come on. We don't go around like our purple 
and gold Hebrew brethren standing on the street corner shouting insults at white people as they go back, go around talking about you going to be our slave and, and reading text that talks about that talks about the foreigner in some negative context. That's not what Hebrew Israel is about. Hebrew Israel is about if that person on the street. And, and the thing about it is, is that the goal of Hebrew Israel is to teach the nations. That's right. That's our goal. Right. We're supposed to be leaders and teachers. That's right. And that's that's you know even while even while it is that we're in this exile because of the sins of our fathers, it pays it pays uh it pays tribute to the prophet to the prophecy of the Most High when he spoke to Father Avram and said, "Your seed shall be as the stars in the sky and the sand in the sea." Because in this exile, we have procreated with the nations, and we got a lot of Samaritans that are part of us. Mm. And a lot of those Samaritans are foreigners. But, you know, y'all, I mean, not y'all, you know, history records that history records from the imperialism and the imperialists that if you have, if you have an ounce of, I don't want to use that word. If you have an ounce of Negroid in you, then you are Negroid. Mm -hmm. I don't care what color you are, you're a Negroid. See? I mean, I mean, look, look, look at history and look at the 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 history of our people who have gone and been able to pass themselves off as being white. But then y'all found out that they had some Negroid in them, and then you do, then she was just a, she was just a nigger. Yeah. So, my point coming back, sir, mm -hmm. on the other side to the foreigner, with Hebrew Israel being in exile and we are melanated people, our melanated people have done something that historically is part of their of their of their DNA. Mm -hmm. We have procreated with the nations. Right. And some of you all Oh my goodness. 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 My goodness. My goodness. My goodness. What happened in slavery? Y'all, y'all were forced to sleep with Massa. And in your sleeping with Massa, you produce some Hebrew children. And vice versa. And we have this interracial marrying, which is part of the of another, another narrative. So the most high's words that to Father Abraham, your seed shall be as the stars of the sky and the sand of the sea, is germane to our exile. And the, and the continued procreation that goes on with Hebrew people and people that are not Hebrew, which are from the nation. Therefore, he says to us, we're not to oppress them. So we're not going around hollering, hollering to people that are not like us that you're going to be our slave. That's not, that's, 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 that's not, that's not scripture. Right. Right. That's not the heart of the most high. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. The Most High wants us to treat the foreigner as we ourselves remembering that we were once enslaved ourselves. Mm. Shemot chapter 22 and verse 21, the prohibition to abuse a widow or an orphan. Now we can do this. We can do this in exile. If we have widows, we have orphans, then we should be paying attention to this. Right. You are not to abuse any widow or an orphan. If you do abuse them in any way and they cry out to me, I will certainly hear their cry. My anger will burn and I will kill you with a ta We're talking about tangible? Tangible. Tangible. I will kill you with the sword. Your own wives will be widows and your own children fatherless. Now, let's look at this for a minute. Widows and orphans are not to be abused. 
mm-hmm. amongst Hebrew Israel. Now, I, you know, I've heard, you heard me say it before. Nations can do whatever they want to do, but Hebrew Israel can't do this. And these mitzvahs that we're talking about are written and they are germane to Hebrew Israel for whom the Most High says obey. So our responsibility amongst our, our nation in this exile is to take care of our widows and take care of our orphans. I'm happy to say, mm. I'm happy to say, I'm happy to say that in the continent of Africa, I have, we have a, we have a congregation that resides in the continent of Africa and it's a very healthy congregation that's there and the dear Kohanim of that of that orphan of that house has an orphanage and yes. we we send y'all don't know this but we send money every month to support that orphanage didn't know I didn't know that. Wow. Wow. Even with the fact that we are, man, I don't need to go there. Mm. But I, I support them. Why? Because the Most High has given me an obligation to take care of widows and yeah. orphans. One more, and we're going to close it down. Uh Let's go to this one here. All right. Oh. Shemot chapter 22, verse 24, the obligation to lend money to the poor. If you loan money to one of my people who is poor, you are not to deal with him as would a creditor and you are not to charge him interest. That, uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. The action words that follow are actions of a creditor. We are to show traits of kindliness and compassion and to bestow goodness upon those who are themselves good, mm. and particularly those who are embarrassed by their need to even have to ask. Compassion. Compassion. That's compassion. Compassion in the midst of folk. Yeah. Now, I, I, now, now I, 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 ha- I have a rule. I have a rule. And my rule, my rule, my rule is this. My rule is that I don't lend money. But if I'm so, if I'm so moved to, to be, to be, to have compassion in relationship to your request and you need and I have it, I'll give it to you. And I give it to you without the expectation that I'm going to get paid back. And I'm not going to badger you for it. Because if you come to me heartfelt, feeling like you need this, I have to understand the nature that it's probably, you've probably come to your wits end with this issue. Right. Correct. And you're even probably embarrassed to even ask. Because I know a lot of times I've needed I've needed help, but I I just bite the bullet because I'm too embarrassed to ask. Mm-hmm. Well, you mm-hmm. receive not because you ask not. Okay, all right, right, all right, 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 all right. All right. But that's just the nature of where I am. So, Sean, you know we've gone through we've gone se- through several of these myths, folks. Tonight we've talked about a, a, a lot of things. I hope that our, our listeners uh, are, are, are understanding the nature and the substantive matter of the mitzvahs that we shared tonight are within the parameter of moral fortitude. I mean, it's something that morally we would do and should do. Exactly. Exactly. And we can't say they've been done away with because yeah. they're what you do. Right. And they are effective. That's right. And they are efficient. And they don't need to be replaced. And if they're going to replace them, replace them with what? Exactly. Exactly. See, this is this is beautiful. And just like in in the dissertation that I that I presented uh, in Sabbath service this this past week from the book of Hebrews chapter chapter seven, my question is: If we want to make 
Jesus Christ, according after the order of Melech, Selech and Kornim are individuals who teach Torah. And if he is supposed to provide what what needs it that, that we must need a a new another Torah? My question is, what Torah did he give us to replace the one that's in place? Right, he seems to be quoting all the ones that are already in existence. Exactly, which is which is crazy. And he did not leave any new Torah. And if if the new Torah is to love God, <laughs> right. And, and love your neighbor your as yourself, right. man. That's we got. We got the Most High has a plethora of teaching that speaks to the heart and soul mm -hmm. of the moral fiber of civilization, right? And of a civilized community. Well, let me ask you this: Why you there? Where do you live? You live in the United States. I live in the United States of America. How do you think, do you know all the laws that are here? The United States is a very complex culture and society. Do you think we have two laws that govern? Uh-uh. Uh-uh. We have laws that we don't even know. We don't even know about. And that's why they come up with it. Just because you didn't know your ignorance of the law doesn't mean that you are exempt from it. We have laws that we don't even know and we're expected. Right. To live by them. Right. Even and if we get arrested for breaking one of them, they tell us ignorance of the law. Is no excuse. Is no excuse. No excuse. And see, huh. I'm going to tell you what's beautiful to me is that number two, I'm going to two things. Number one, number one, they're easy to do. There's nothing up there that you have enumerated this evening in the little portion, the iceberg, tip of the iceberg that we've talked about tonight that is difficult. Is there anything difficult no. about that? No. no. There's nothing difficult no. about it. That's one. I'm marveling at how easy no. it is. No. And to make it even more easier, there, like I, I've mentioned before, there are mitzvot that we went over there tonight or went over tonight that are written this is me talking on the hard drive of your spirit. No one has to teach you them. Nope. You know them you know already. Them already. You know not to do nothing intimate with no animal. Don't nobody have to sit you down and say, now, Johnny. You out there dealing the, ch <laughs> out there dealing the chickens again. Yeah, now, now let's have this conversation, <laughs> sweetheart. We keep, no one has to do that. No. That's how I know these mitzvot are real because some of them are inherently written on you. You know them coming out. The Most High hasn't gotten so far away from us or we from him because he's always there. His eyes are always upon Israel. Israel. We haven't gotten so far away from the Most High where the mitzvot still can't pull on you. Yes. They're always there. Yes. You just have to unlock them. You have to dig yourself out of the minutia of all the crap that's been put off the top of them so you can get back to your factory default that you have when you come out that womb. Yeah, now, now, now let's, let's, let's close with this. Let's close with this. And so King David says, I meditate upon them day and night. Day and In night. other words, I think about them. Now, uh, when my spirit is drawn to want to do something outside the parameter of 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 that which is moral, mm -hmm. I think about that. Right. That's meditating. I think about that and I conclude in my spirit, oh no, that's wrong. Uh, I'm angry and I want to knock the heck out of my mother and my father. Oh, I wish you were dead. And then, and, and, and now so, if I know the myth fault, yeah, and I draw my, and, and, and mama said, I wish you would. Exactly. I know my mama said, I wish you would. Yeah, that thought wouldn't even come. <laughs> see, <laughs> see, but the mitzvot now comes into your mind, okay, about honoring your mother and father. And number two, you shall not strike your mother or your father. Now you've, you've meditated upon that. You've thought about that and you draw yourself back to the idea that that's not a good thing that I should do. Right. 
but you meditate. Med See, meditation is nothing but thought. That's right. That's right. I thought about it. Right. Hey, I have had a good time tonight. <laughs> I want to tell you, I've had a good time tonight. Very I hope you listeners and uh, listening to this podcast and if you have an opportunity to view it, I hope you understand and see the the excitement that uh, Sean and I have just talking about the wonderful things that are germane to our life in this exile and our expectation as we move forward in the days ahead when we will be back in the land with our King David and the Ruach HaKodesh, the Most High, overseeing the whole thing of our deliverance back to the place that we've been excommunicated from. Well, until next time, this has been Rabbi Robert B. Holman Jr. and Sean Appleton. And this has been Hebrews, Hebrews in Exile. Shalom. Shalom.